Guess what day it is, folks? Wednesday. <laughs> Today. <laughs> no, I won't say that. No, won't do it. Won't do it. It would have been really tacky, so I'm going to stay away from that. All right, so I am gloving up, however, because I do not want to get my pristine hands ha, dirtier than they already are. What we're going to do today is we're going to knock around with this stuff called Doxy5. Now, it is a defoamer, and for those of you who may have a little bit of industrial experience, a defoamer would be the kind of thing you put you were happening to be a orange juice manufacturer and so you slosh all this orange juice stuff in these big tanks and they get all foamy and stuff so they they put this defoamer in there and um, it makes it foam less so that they don't have to worry about all this frothy stuff I like the froth but anyway you get the point they do the same basic thing with these urethane chemicals and the purpose of it is to make it hold air no, let me take that back. To make it let go of the air easier. That would be the English way to say it. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to mix up some small batches of this stuff, and then I'm going to pour the batches into these white cups so you cannot see. You cannot see what is going on until it is too late. And then while that stuff is curing, and I'm going to do one with Doxy5, <coughs> excuse me, and one without. While that's going on, then we're going to go over to this side of the table where what I've done is I've set up a couple little teeny batches of this stuff called Rebound 25, which is the rubber that we would use for making brush-on molds, kind of like this. See? Yeah, yeah. This happens to be a turtle. Can you tell? Um, and I'm going to show you what happens when you put silicone thinner in it, and then I'm going to show you what happens when you put Thyvex in it, which is the thickener. So you'll see. And then what we'll do is we'll demonstrate on the handy dandy board over here. See? The handy dandy board. You might recognize this one from last week. And I'll show you how it runs and then miraculously it doesn't. So without any further ado, here we go. So I have pre-mixed two batches of Smoothcast 325 which is not technically a clear product, but it is, in this case, clear enough. Typically with this, you get a lot of bubbles in it. Um, and it really doesn't even matter because the purpose here is to have a colorless product so that when you put a color in it, you don't have to fight off the white, or fight off the black, or fight off the amber, or whatever. But when, when things are just right and you hold your pinky just so, it turns out pretty good. So we're going to use that as our little experimental material today. So first thing, you've seen this a trillion times. Okay, maybe a hundred. We're going to mix this stuff up. I'm going to dump the old A in the cup. Then I'm going to dump the old B in the cup. Yeah. Right. Piece of cake so far. We're going to stir it up. Now, just to give you an idea of what it looks like, I do have one clear cup here. So if I stir the snot out of this stuff, and I say that lovingly, okay, looks pretty good, okay? Can you see that? Can you see that man coming out of the other camera? Cool, okay. So, all we're going to do here is just pour this in this other cup, nothing special. So there's that. So this is the non-Doxy5 version. All right. We'll set that there. So everybody remember and help me out later on. Non-Doxy5. Okay. Now, this will be the Doxy5 version. Notice three cups. Yeah, three cups. All right. I previously weighed out approximately 5% of the total mix. That's the number we're going to go with, okay? And I'm going to apply proper mixing rules, which is anytime you're tinkering with a urethane, you tinker in the B side. So we're going to dump this into the B side, okay? Didn't really do much to the color. Still looks pretty much like it did before. So we'll just 
go. So here's the A, same old stuff, glug glug. Okay. Notice I'm starting a very nice little stack of cups here. Here's the B. Wow. Every one of those telephone calls is money. Okay, anyway. All right, stir it up just like we did before. All right, normally I would do the old double mix thing, but in a way we are kind of double mixing because I'm taking this material from this cup, dumping it into the clear cup, okay? Now at this stage of the game, it looks a little bit frostier. I know that's not exactly a technical term, but it kind of looks a little frosty, okay? So, that's what we've got right now. Then, take the other cup, right? Go like so. Now, I do want you to know that this could turn out all kinds of different ways. And we might learn, hey, not worth doing this stuff. But that's the whole point behind chemical stir fry, is that we just blow stuff up. We don't really care what, how it turns out, always. So, okay, this is what it looks like now. And at this stage of the game, it actually looks a little bit cloudier than the other. But we're just going to see. So I'm going to be fair. Bump, 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 bump. This one's already kicked off. Okay. So we're just going to let that sit. We'll see where we go. Okay, now, any questions? Nope. You sure? Bueller? Anyone? No one. Okay. Now, next thing. More funky little cups. Rebound 25. It is a platinum cure silicone typically used for brushing, although I do know of one guy whose name I will not mention, who uh, poured it, seemed to work okay, and then I showed him what it was like to use a pourable material, and he decided maybe that's the route he would go instead, and uh, I think I changed his life, we'll see. So, okay, out of the box, we'll just go the yellow side, even if it isn't yellow, it's orange, excuse me. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now with silicones, it doesn't matter quite so much um, if you put anything in the A or the B. So in that, I don't really care. I'm just going to put some stuff in whatever this is. This would be the B side. Okay. I'm just going to take about a cap full and I'm going to dump it in there. Okay. Now I'll take the other side. I'm going to dump it in here, too. Swami, Swami. I think black gloves make a statement. My humble opinion. All right. Now, I'm going to stir this stuff up. Is you watching out there? Now, somebody might say, hey, why? What's the purpose of thinning the mix? Well, the purpose for thinning the mix is that it enables you to get more detail. You're working with a thinner material. You know what? I'm going to put more in. Why? Because I can. You're working with a thinner material which is in turn going to flow better over the surface, okay, and is more likely to let go of any air that you might trap in there, all right? Now, can you put an infinite amount of this stuff in here? Nope, because it'll eventually leach out. Now, it is a silicone-based material, but just the same, you can add too much. It is possible. Okay, so, this is now what we got. See that? Kind of looks like just regular old silicone now, doesn't it? Okay, and here's what we do. This is the fancy way of demonstrating how this stuff works without knocking anything over. Is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? Close enough. Especially if I put my hand right here. 
Watch this. That was a very polite sound in there. Okay, so there's a puddle of silicone. See it? See it? Watch this. See? It's thin enough to where I can make it run. So that's what happens when you put in the thinner. Okay? The thinner does basically that. So, again, the good thing about this is that we can use it to put down a thin base coat. Okay? You can trowel it if you want. That's what makes you happy. <clears throat> makes you happy. Okay. See that? And again, the application here is going to be if you've got something with a whole lot of detail, um, texture and skin be a good example. This kind of a first coat allows you to capture all those little nooks and the crannies um, and not worry about trapping air in there or just plain missing them. Okay? But you see the downside to this. It's running off. Okay? And those of you who have used this Rebound 25 know that even if you just use the stuff right out of the proverbial box, if you lay it on too thick, this more or less simulates what you get when you put it on too thick. It just runs off. Okay? So, set this aside for a minute. Good. Now, we're going to mix up this other batch. Multiple cups. Same stuff. This is a one-to-one -one material by volume, okay? So it's fairly easy to mix. And um, you can tell how much care I use to make sure I got the ratio right. And uh, remember from past weeks, if it's Wednesday and approximately 12.05, we will get a truck. And that's what that noise is you hear in the background. So far, no forklift. I'm a little disappointed. But hey, we're not done yet. It could happen. All right. So there's that. Now, other miracle material, Thyvex. This has the opposite effect. If you want to break the word down, go right ahead. I got two drops, three, four, five, well, let's just throw in six, seven, some number of drops like that. Probably a little more than you really need, but for the purposes of illustration, I want to make sure that I get my point across. So, okay, eight drops of that stuff, thereabouts. Stir it up. I have no idea what camera we're using. Which camera are we using? You know? Oh, this one. Hi. Can you see me? Okay. We mix it until it's the same color. We're looking for streaks and we're trying to get rid of them if we possibly can. Okay. So do you remember what happened with the first batch? Well, here's an illustration of what it looks like in the second batch. Okay. It's a little thicker, wouldn't you say? All right. And what's the purpose of this, you might ask? Well, suppose you got all those details filled in now, and all you're trying to do is get it thick. Well, now you can. See, told you, work clip. Ha! Ah, just a matter of time. So, back to the old board. Notice how it's not going anywhere. Okay? That is the purpose of Thyvex. All right, now, next thing. If you were doing a head cast, or you were doing a shape where you knew darn well you're going to have to cut the rubber, you would want to make what's known as a fat line. Okay? When you add Thyvex, it makes it very possible to do a fat line just by sculpting it. See? Now, you don't always get it on the first pass. Sometimes it takes more than one. But, as you can see, it becomes really simple to create a fat place in the rubber. Okay? So if we let that firm up, and by the way, neither of these chemicals 
really affect the cure time of the rubber. All it really does is just thicken it. But we let this batch firm up a little bit, then we could come back and we could shape the side and get a flat edge, which if that was where your jacket was gonna to come together, that's gonna to be very helpful, okay? So, and I could play with this stuff forever, but that's not really going, not really going to help much. But you see the difference here? That stuff ran off, this stuff didn't. Thinner, thicker. Thinner, Thyvex. And for those of you who are just curious, the chemical name for the thinner is dimethyl fluid. And it comes in different viscosities. And in this particular case, we have chosen to use one with a viscosity of 50 centistokes. Does that make you feel smart? I hope so. Centistokes, it's not just a big word. It's three sevenths of the middle of a haiku. Okay. Now, I'm gonna set that aside. Any questions? You people are very quiet today. Which one? This one? Oh, hi, okay. Okay. So we've got the non-doxy-5 side, and we've got the doxy-5 side. I'm not very happy with the results. And I'm about to show you why. Excuse me. That's the stuff without any Doxy-5 in it. Already did that. Here's the stuff with the Doxy-5 in it. Well, looky there. There's a surprise. One thing I will tell you is that this stuff smells good. Uh, but beyond that, I'm going to have to do some more experimentation with this before I'm going to feel good about it. Um, that's the way I uh, want it to come across. And as I said, sometimes we do things and it works, and sometimes we do things and it does not. In this particular case, what I'm going to tell you is that I don't think this works. So, there's something I'm doing wrong. Uh, that's a possibility. Or... There's also the possibility that it's just not as good a material as I was hoping that it would be. So, here's the conclusion. Don't buy any yet. That's the conclusion. And on our side, what we have to do is try to get a better understanding of what we did wrong, if anything. I don't think so. I used 5%. I think that was plenty. Um, I don't get it. But that's why we experiment, right? So, okay. Uh, okay, let's do a quick review. 5% Doxy-5 didn't seem to make much difference. And by the way, this was a fresh kit. So, um, didn't have anything to do with the age. I did pour both batches out of the same container. Blah, 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 blah. So, there's that. Now, now, I really can't say anything else about this. On the other side, what we've got, we've got a pretty good demonstration of the difference between thinner and Thyvex, okay? The other thing I will tell you is that if you look at this guy, you'll notice there's a little green in there. And I do want to point out that when you are doing a brush-up mold like this, it's a little hard to lay orange over top of orange. So what we do, and uh, I would recommend this to anybody, is uh, every other layer, just throw some color in it. Um, we sell the stuff called Silk Pig, it works fine. Um, just anything to make it look different. That way when you put one layer on top of the other, it's visibly apparent where you got and where you didn't got. So that'll help you out. Uh, anything else? Nope, nope. I will tell you that uh, we're working on adding the postal service as a shipping option. Um, I feel 
a little weird every time we have a little teeny item. I mean like this, right? We ship that by FedEx ground and that little teeny item is going to cost anywhere from six to ten dollars to ship to you. That's silly. So we're going to try the post office. We're going to see how that's going to work out. So um, we're going to make it work on the web. We will most assuredly make it work if you call the orders in. So if you do call in and want to buy something and you would like to use the post office, just ask us. Maybe a little confusing at first because we're going to probably take just a little bit of time to figure out how to give you a rate for that. But we are going to figure out how to give you a rate for it. And I promise you it will be cheaper. We ought to be able to send this to you for two bucks, three bucks. And that's just how I feel about it. I mean, yeah. If, if I was the customer, I'd want it cheap. So there you go. Uh, Halloween. We're going to be open Halloween day, regular hours. We're also going to do something goofy for Halloween. Go figure, but that's what we're going to do. Um, so look forward to that. It could be costume contest. It could be the week before. That would be this week. It could be we decide to, to invite everybody in to help us make tombstones for the place outside the front. We'll see. We're going to do something good. I promise you. So, okay. I think I'm through. You think I'm through? Then I must be through. How about you people? Am I through? Yeah, I'm through. Okay. Sayonara. Hasta la vista, baby. See ya.